On its surface, BattleBit looks like a pretty simple game. Blocky, shoot, nothing complicated, right? I can promise you there's a couple of things in the game you're missing. And that's what this video is about. We're gonna show you some of the deeper details that you might have overlooked that are gonna help you have a better experience in the game. Now, the first one right out the gate is your character gear. This gear isn't just cosmetic. As you change chest armors, backpacks, belts, helmets, not only do you change how much durability the armor has, which is a equivalent to how much damage you can take, it can change your running speed, how much equipment you can carry, and how many mags you can carry. So make sure you look through this and get your guys geared. Each class has its own setup, so you wanna make sure you're geared for your play style. Now, a quick note along with this, I see this question get asked a lot in each game for brand new players. How do you change your character class? At your death screen or before you spawn in, where you change your loadouts and stuff, down in the bottom middle is all your different classes. There's not really a tactile feedback or anything that tells you when you're clicking on them, but this is where you click on assault, medic, support, or, or recon or whatever, and this is how you change them. From here, you can click on loadout or character and change your classes or change your gear from there. Now, one I wanna bring more attention to is the squad leader class. This is only available to if you're a squad leader. What's special about this is how different it is compared to the other classes. Not just with what weapons you can run, but the actual specific gear kit you have. So take advantage of this if you can. It can be pretty good for pushing and being a squad leader. Gear and weapon upgrades or unlocks are based entirely on your level. So you don't have to play as a sniper to unlock more sniper rifles. You just have to level up. So you can play whatever class gets you the most experience. The only type of thing that is specific is your attachments. Those you have to get kills with the weapons. That's attachments and skins or camos for your specific guns. Those unlock with kills with those guns. Otherwise, you just got to level up your character. Now, depending on when you're watching this, you can link your account to Twitch to get drops. You do this in the connections menu, and by doing this, any streamer you watch, you're gonna unlock various cosmetics and other potential unlocks in the first couple of weeks of early access. Now onto some more of the specific in-game tips. One out there that's gonna help a lot of people out that they don't realize is if you're playing the medic, you can actually throw out one of your med kits or both of them, you just don't have any after that. And people can use that like the ammo kit to heal themselves. It's slower, but it means you don't have to hang around. So like, let's say you've got a sniper or guys held up in a position defending a point, you can throw a med kit down for them, run off and they can heal themselves. This also applies to bandages. You can throw bandages out as a medic. You have tons of extra ones and sometimes players run out of them. So if they are, you can throw a bandage down for them and they can pick them up and have extra bandages. Now, one of the really common things you're gonna do as a medic is picking people up, but you don't have to just sit there and pick them up where they're at. One of the awesome features of this game is the ability to pick up a player, drag them, and even heal them while dragging them. So you can revive a player and bandage them while in the process of dragging. All you have to do is hit F on them and they're kind of attached to you. So as you're walking away from the firefight, just hold three on my, that's what my keybind is, the original, and you will revive them as you're walking away. Now, keeping with this theme of throwing gear out, as the support class, you can throw out ammo boxes. This allows players to reload all sorts of stuff from your ammo box. It's everything from ammo, grenades, and light equipment to even bandages as players run out of them. Now, this isn't the only places people can get ammo. You can also get these from airdrop crates, which look like this. And this is a pretty simple process. Most anybody can do them as long as you have enough squad points, which shows down in the bottom left. You can either hold middle mouse button or hit the O button, and this will bring up a menu and you click on the little parachute, and then you select where you want the airdrop to come in. It comes out of the sky, it takes, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, maybe a little longer to get to the ground, and then anybody can use them, even the other team. Now, in addition to this O menu, or the, the radio menu almost, if you will, with the middle mouse button, you can build fortifications and rally points. Now, rally points are limited only to the squad leader, but they are incredibly powerful when your team uses them correctly. You place one down and it gives you a spawn point for your squad. But you want to make sure you fortify these. Don't just place them out in the open because it only takes one bullet to disable them and not very many to completely destroy them. Now, keep in mind, if one is disabled, all you have to do is walk up to it and hold F to kind of rebuild it and make it work again if it hasn't been destroyed. But like I was saying, you want to build fortifications around these and that allows them to be a little bit more protected as well as if somebody spawns in, they're not an open target really easily. Building fortifications is easy. It's also in the O menu. You have five selections. One of them is limited to the support character only. The other four are two types of sandbags, a HESCO wall, and a concrete barrier. 
These all require points, but they're pretty easy to pick up these squad points to build these. Now, the one that's limited to the support class is the double HESCO barrier. It's really tall. This one you can't hurdle or climb over. And it's kind of a newer addition. They added it after the first couple of days of the early access. Now, kind of going back to this part of reloading, you know, if you don't have ammo crates or you don't have things picked up, you have ways to pack your magazines. You'll notice as you reload in your bottom right corner, your magazines maintain how much ammo they have. It's not like they just magically refill. So in order to refill them based on your existing ammo, basically you take a little bit of ammo out of an almost empty mag and top off another. You hold the P button and you just hold this P button until all of your mags are full. Now, the very far right mag is the mag that is in your weapon. So if you have a half a mag on this little slot here, that means the, the one in your gun is half empty. You can check this by pressing the H key. You'll get a little pop up in the middle of your screen when you check that tells you how many rounds and how much your mag can hold. So, you know, 15 of 30 or whatever shows up. But keep in mind, there are two different kinds of reloads as well. You tap R versus hold R. Now, if you hold R, you do a really quick reload because essentially you just drop the mag out of the gun and you grab another one, put it in rather than a tactical reload, which takes the mag out, puts it in your container, put, then pulls another one out and puts it in, which takes longer. So you'll drop this mag and it'll be on the ground and you can't refill this at a crate. Like it doesn't give you extra mags if you go to an ammo crate. You have to pick that mag up or it's gone until you die. But with how long reloads can be in this game, it can be the difference between you surviving and not. So don't hesitate to use that reload for a little quicker turnaround when you're in the middle of a firefight. Let's shift gears here a little bit and talk about night vision. During the voting process, you can very well end up on night modes of almost any map. And a lot of players don't like this, but it's because I don't think they understand how all the mechanics work. So let's talk about those so it's a little bit more enjoyable. First off, you don't need anything special. You get night vision by just pressing N. So give your character better vision at night, though you're more susceptible to things like flares and flashlights. One of the problems is though that a lot of optics will not work with this. If you have medium or long range scopes, you cannot ADS under NVGs. If you have red dots or holographics, you're fine. So if you're running a scope, make sure you have either a canted sight or a scope on top. If you don't, when you go to ADS with a scope on, your gun will do this kind of half canted uh, point fire aim. And this actually works okay if you have a laser on. Now, green lasers work pretty good like this. You can see them with your NVGs on, but with them off, they're not quite as obvious. In addition, one thing that can work really well when you're fighting other players with NVGs is flares. These absolutely completely blow out NVGs and make it impossible to see, as well as flashlights. So if you get stuck in a night raid, don't hesitate to switch to these in your kit and get the most use out of them. Now, one of the more funnier things that can happen in a game is when people realize they don't have a parachute. You'll see players jump out of a helicopter and they do this kind of awkward, non-accelerating gravity fall that you can actually hit them and get some bonus points out of. Now, the devs have said they don't plan on adding parachutes anytime soon. So to get out of the helicopter safely, the pilot either has to land or get very close to the ground so you don't die from fall damage, or they have to drop their ropes. Once the ropes are down, if you press the F key, you will climb on the rope. And then you use either your w, w or S key, depending on what direction you're looking, to descend the rope and get off the helicopter. If you have a good pilot, this means you can get to points with a whole squad really quickly. Now, in addition to this, you also have ropes from grapples. And they work the same way, but getting onto one of these can kind of trick players up sometimes. All you really have to do is run up to one, hit the space bar and grab it, and then just, you don't have to hold it. You just let go and use the W and S keys to move up and down. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you can cut these ropes. So if you're using one and you get up on top and you don't want somebody to be able to follow you, just hold the caps lock key and it'll cut the rope and it goes away. Now, two more tools that a lot of people kind of overlook that have a lot of use is the sledgehammer and the pickaxe, but they have a difference. Sledgehammer is a sledgehammer. It breaks down walls that are breakable. You can break stairs. You can do all sorts of stuff with it. The pickaxe is more precision. You can use that to break off individual little blocks and make yourself little peepholes or things to look out of to shoot players. Now, keep in mind that if you're just going around breaking stuff with a sledgehammer, eventually you can drop a building. If enough walls are destroyed, the entire building will collapse. You'll get a rumble sensation and some noise and the building will shake and give you a warning to get out. But if you don't, everybody inside will die. Now, one of my more favorite topics or things to play in the game is sniping. And there's a couple of really important tips here for people. And maybe we'll do a whole video more about sniping, but we'll get across some of the bigger ones here. The first one is that the only scopes that have a glint are long range scopes. So the medium range scopes, which are generally about four X's, they don't have a glint, which means if you're using a sniper rifle, though you can't see as well at distance, it's not so obvious where you're at. This also applies to red dots that attach to the top of the scopes. If you're looking through the red dot, you will not have a glint. 
Now, one thing a lot of people don't realize, because it's not as easy to see, is that you can adjust the zero of your scope, which basically means that if you adjust your scope to a zero of 400, if you shoot at 400 meters, your bullet will hit right where your crosshair is. This is because of the bullet drop in the game. Now, this is easy to figure out if you have a range finder. If you put a range finder on your gun, that not only does it show on the side, but it'll show on your scope when you're ADS. And you can just hold the alt button, the left alt button, and use your mouse wheel up or down to adjust your zero. Now, the limits to this is based on the weapon and the scope. So for example, the 20X with an SV-98, you can go all the way to a thousand meters, but no more. But the M200, you can go up to 1300. Now, one other thing that tricks people up is that the bolt actions require two clicks, one to shoot and one to cycle the bolt. That is until you get a bolt upgrade. If you look here, it's really easy to overlook, but on the sniper rifle, there is a bolt attachment. Once you get a few kills on these, you can start loading these or changing these bolts. And not only will it allow you to cycle the bolt while ADS, so you don't have to come out from behind the gun, your scope goes all goofy. It gives you the option to auto reload. It's not an option, it just happens. So if you have the right bolt selected when you click, not only does your guy auto cycle the bolt, but you don't get out from behind the scope either. So don't overlook that upgrade. It's really important when you're sniping. And the last one is bipods. Now this doesn't just apply to snipers, but this at first we'll talk about it here. What this does is it allows it to where you don't have to hold shift to hold your breath. Any other time in order to steady your scope, especially if you're looking a long ways away, you need to hold shift and there's a limited time you can do that. With a bipod, if you're prone or you're near something that you can set the bipod on, which you'll see because you'll get the little indicator in the bottom right, you will hold your weapon perfectly steady. Now, if you have a long range scope, of course, this means you're gonna be having a sniper glint the whole time, so you're gonna be easy to find. But it does allow you to make follow-up shots and quicker shots without having to worry about breath. Now, as a sniper, and this works with any classes, but one of the really important things you can do is ping players or vehicles. Now, these only show up for your squad, but you can use them to make callouts and let people know where they're at. This is by clicking the middle mouse button. Now, one thing you should do though, is go into your settings, Go to gameplay, scroll down until you find the icon size for the pings. I run about 300, but that can be a little big. Find the size that works for you, but the default is tiny and really hard to see. At least bigger, they stand out and you can tell where your teammates are pinging when you're looking for it yourself. On top of this, if you ping a tank, a vehicle, anything like that, it stays pinged and it shows everybody on the minimap where that is. So if you have a tank harassing people, this is a really good way to call attention to it because a lot anybody who's running an engineer with anti-tank gear, they go hunting those tanks. They love those little red pings and can kill them quickly. So that's the best way to deal with vehicles that are bothering you. Speaking of that, we'll talk about the RPGs now. RPGs can be kind of hard to shoot at ranges, especially the basic ones that don't have optics. They're just iron sights. But the later RPGs have these kind of fancy scopes on them. But what do they mean? Well, I can tell you here, or you can just go look in the game when you're in your loadout screen. It tells you on the side what it is. Now, not every RPG is the same because they have different weights per se, the way it is in real life, but it's simply because one's more powerful and they want to make it harder for balance purposes. But the ranging is, as you can see here in the bottom right, for 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. Now, the tandem is where it gets crazy because the tandems are slow, they're heavy, they have crazy drop. So you only have this you know, 100, uh, 200, 150, these different markers on here because it's very difficult to shoot these any farther than that. Also in your arsenal, you have anti-tank grenades and don't hesitate to use these, but they're not great, but they still work okay. And they're better than having regular grenades if you come up against a vehicle. Just keep in mind, they do not explode on impact. They're kind of like a regular grenade. They got a fuse, you throw them, they'll go past the vehicle, they'll bounce off the vehicle, whatever, but they do do okay damage. They're great for blowing up like Humvees that are sitting still or things like that to just kind of grind out a few extra points. Now, one other thing with grenades that kind of throws a lot of people off is how do you underhand them? And the simplest way to put this is you hold the right mouse button. So after you hit G, you hold G, you'll get this pop-up on your screen that shows underhand right, right? Well, it's not a click. A lot of people will click and you still throw it anyways. You have to hold the right mouse button, let go of G, and you'll underhand throw a grenade, which allows you to throw grenades very close over little barriers and stuff. Just be careful because it can be pretty easy to blow yourself up if you're not if you're not watching what you're doing. Now, in addition to this, you have claymores and AP mines that also work well. But the best place to place these often isn't when the wide open because they can they stand out and they're easy to see. But they are near impossible to see in bushes and grass. So if you're placing these things in on maps that have foliage in choke points or places where players traverse, you're almost always gonna get kills because you just can't see them and players run right over the top of them. 
But that wraps up the video right there. That's all of the tips I got for you for now. I think we'll get into some more later for some other videos, but don't hesitate to hit that like button if you enjoyed the content or you learned anything out of it. Subscribe if you want to see more. We're going to be doing tons more BattleBit content. This game's just too much fun and, and too good to, for me to not do lots of content on it. I'm just enjoying it too much. So we'll leave her there and kind of typical of my Tarkov content, except this time we'll see you in BattleBit. Thank you.